Nothing yeah. happened. You didn't time warp. You didn't time warp. We are still in Matthew chapter 13. But today, in lieu of, in lieu of the coronavirus and everything that's going on, we God placed it in my heart to study and to just give a, not just a teaching, but more so of a, a teaching assignment of encouragement. If that's okay with y'all. Mm -hmm. So our lesson will come from, or I just our subject will come from, Matthew chapter 24, verses 4 through 8. But we'll also read later on Hebrews chapter 10, verses 22 through 25. And we'll be talking about the Christ. Can, can I get a hug, handshake with you? Oh, I didn't know. I didn't know, man. I didn't know. I got to know, know, know how to love you. I got to know how to love you. <laughs> we'll be talking about the Christ the coronavirus, and the church. <laughs> we'll be talking about this. <laughs> and because this is so, it's such an epidemic. Right. It really is an epidemic. You know, whenever you are shutting down cities and uh, potentially shutting down cities, people have to quarantine themselves. We, we have to know, especially as the church, what did Jesus say about this? What does the word of God say about this? And what is our responsibility to this? Now, if you notice, we're talking about the Christ, the coronavirus, and the church. And the coronavirus is in the middle. It's smack dab in the middle with that. So this lesson will be a lesson of encouragement, but also a lesson of instruction. Whichever one you need for this particular moment, this particular juncture. So Matthew chapter 24, verses 4 through 8. When you get there, say amen. Amen. I got one. Good amen, too. Amen. Oh, at the same time, don't be knocking on wood, jinxing and stuff, doing buggy slug mug and all that stuff. All right, take your time. I want to make sure we're all on the same page, same paragraph. Now remember, I'm reading out of the New King James, so if my sound any different from yours, that is why. Got it. I got it. Got it. Got it. Read, amen. Got it. Verse four says, and Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For a nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Skip to verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. Amen. So we'll so we'll go to Hebrews 10, 22 and 25 in a little bit. So this is Jesus Christ, right? Our Lord and our Savior. For the sake of tonight, I'm not going to go into so much Greek, Hebrew. I'm not going to be doing a whole bunch of the breaking down things. But I just want to center this on the Christ. Our Messiah, our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Jesus prophesied about this over 2,020 years ago. That the beginning of sorrows, the, the, the ending of the age, so to speak, is not quite the end, but the beginning of sorrows, that these things were going to become more rapid. Now, for the sake of tonight, I don't want to talk about false messiahs. I want to talk about false messiahs. Because there have been some who have already done that. There have been some who come in claim to be the Christ, but I don't want to talk about that. I just want to talk about two particular things. We already know we're going to talk about the coronavirus, but I want to talk about the famines and the pestilences. The famines and the pestilences, if y'all don't mind. So Christ's prophecy should have prepared us as the church for this day and time. Now one of the most beautiful things about prophecy, y'all, especially as the church, prophecy prepares us for that which is to come, but also gives us comfort to know that, our, that the word of God is true. It gives us comfort to know that the scriptures prophesy a certain thing, and our Messiah prophesies a certain thing, so when we see certain things happening in the earth, we don't have to become frantic or panic, panic but we do have to become urgent. Does this make sense? Amen. So Jesus Christ is the priority. Jesus Christ is the power. He's the priority, and he's the power. Whatever Jesus says has precedence. Amen. Nothing else that happens in the world has precedence over Jesus Christ and his work. So if we're going to be kingdom disciples, y'all, since we are kingdom disciples, we should be more excited about what Jesus said, but also urgent about what Jesus said. Yeah. So Jesus said that there will be sufferings in various kinds, or sufferings of various kinds. 
Well, let's just discuss right now pestilences and famine. What is a famine? Um, without food. Without, a drought without food. Now, as of right now, we haven't gotten to that stage. So that's lemos. The Greek word for famines is lemos. We haven't gotten to that stage just yet. And we hope and pray that God will bless us now to enter that stage. But if this pestilence, which is also a plague, the Greek word means plague or, or a literal disease, that's what the coronavirus is. Now, notice that the coronavirus followed what Christ said. I don't want to go into who sent what. Was it God who sent the coronavirus? Was it the devil who sent the coronavirus? All I know is nothing can come through this earth unless God allows it. So God is doing something to shake up the earth and also give people an opportunity to not only seeing their mortality, but to seeing their frailty. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. God bless you. Not just seeing their mortality, but also seeing their frailty. To know that, look, at the snap of a finger, at the drop of a dime, within a blink of an eye, I, can, I don't have to be as healthy or as whole as I am, let alone alive. Before my wife and I came, I had let her know, I saw breaking news that Kevin Durant was diagnosed positive with coronavirus. So we pray as the saints, as the church, we pray. But it goes to show that no amount, no amount of money, no status, nor measure can exempt you from certain things. This is why it's important that we know what Jesus Christ said. Now, Jesus says this again over 2,020 years ago. Earthquakes in Dallas. <laughs> years ago, Houston had an earthquake. That's crazy. Now, I would think as hot as it get in Houston, it just crack. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the street would just crack. But it was an actual earthquake a few years ago. So Jesus Christ's word is actually fulfilling itself. So again, here we are. Pestilences, a loimos, a plague, a literal disease. But this is not just any type of disease. This is a disease that cannot be cured. This is what Jesus was teaching. Jesus the Christ, our Messiah, prophesied that this was, there was going to be a virus of some sort, but it's not the end of the age, it's the beginning of sorrows. My encouragement, my encouragement to us as a church is to know that this is not quite yet the end. Right. Which means we still have a work to do. We still have the opportunity and the ability to go out to the highways and hedges compelling men. So Jesus Christ says it's going to be a plague in various places. This plague goes from one nation to another nation. And it's very, 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 very hard to figure out. The coronavirus doesn't even, you can be diagnosed positive with the coronavirus and not even have the symptoms. That's scary. That's scary. You can be diagnosed with it and not even know that you have it. Feeling fine, walking well, doing good. But then you go to the doctor and you get the checkup and you find that you have it. This is why it's important that we have Jesus. Amen. And I'll discuss a little bit more of that. Plus the same later on. So, verse 14 is one of the things that we must do. So I'm not just going to be talking to y'all and just give y'all a lecture. I have to give y'all some, you know, I got to write on the board at least once. <laughs> what must we do as the church? Because the coronavirus is smack dab in between the Christ and the church. What must we do as the church? Verse 14. Jesus says this, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations. <clears throat> And then the end will come. One of the first things, or one of the things we must do as the church is preach the message of Jesus Christ, the message of the kingdom of God. I'll put that down. Amen. 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 Number one, I'll put number one. Now, my, my Mark is running out a little bit, so y'all got to bear with me. Preach the message. Preach the word. Now, I said, preach the word. Of Jesus. Now put it. Kingdom. Now while we're preaching the message of the kingdom, God bless you. While we're preaching this message of the kingdom of Jesus Christ, y'all, it's important that we're not only preaching this message, but we're also witnesses of this message. We are witnesses of this message. 
We're not just talking to people about Jesus Christ and the kingdom, the rule of God, how God can rule their lives and give them peace in areas of midst of conflict and confusion. We're talking to people about Jesus, but also being a witness. Notice what Jesus says. In this gospel of the kingdom, we preach to all the world as a witness. So not only is the word going to be a witness, we should also be a witness. Because as we deal with this coronavirus, again, you, a person can be diagnosed and not even know it. They can, have it. they can have it and not even understand they have it. But if we more focus on the coronavirus than the Christ, as the church, we are out of order. Now, there's nowhere in Scripture where God does not give us common sense. Wash your hands. Right. 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 Yes, Wash your hands. Don't come sneezing on me. <laughs> Don't be smacking your fingers and touching other folks' food. God gives us common sense. So don't allow a misunderstanding of grace to be, well, I'm going to go. I can, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. <laughs> don't be dumb. Just because Christ gives you the power of the Holy Spirit doesn't mean he doesn't give you the power of common sense. Right. Can I give y'all a, a, a real-time example? You don't go into an area of sick people. <laughs> Ungloved, unmasked, on your own power, talking about Satan, the Lord rebuke you. <laughs> the blood of Jesus is going to be against somebody. <laughs> but I'll tell you one thing you come out, it ain't God's fault. So Jesus says, This message of the kingdom must will be preached. This is our first responsibility as the church. This is what Christ tells the church to do. In regards to coronavirus, we never stop preaching the message of Jesus Christ. We never stop preaching the message of Jesus Christ. We never stop preaching the message of Jesus Christ. We never stop. We never stop preaching nor witnessing the gospel of the kingdom. Never. Now, how do we do that is going to be different. But we never cut off the, the gospel switch, the kingdom switch in our lives. Questions? Comments? Observation. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Um, it's going back to the original question. Okay. Um, you said that you don't know if God or Satan sent it, but you know that you know God. Yes, ma'am. Allowed. Without His permission, right? right it would be. Okay. Yes, ma'am. And He's using it to shake up people to show. So they can become one with their frailty. Yes, ma'am. So they can become one with their mor their mortality, mortality and their frailty. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Because that's what this is doing. It's shaking people up. Shaking up folks to the degree where they understand, look, I, I can die. I can get sick and die. It's not only dealing with their mortality and their livelihood, but they're dealing with their frailty and their humanity. And that's what Jesus Christ is allowing us to do. But ultimately, y'all, this is always designed to bring people into the kingdom. Because once people start analyzing their morality and their frailty, they actually start thinking about what's going to happen beyond this life. And that's when, bam, the church comes into action. And that's why I get excited and encouraged about this. Because what the devil may mean for bad, for evil, God means it for good. But the only way God brings good out of it is if the church is, in, church is involved. Because the Holy Spirit ain't going to do everything. Notice the Holy Spirit came on the apostles in the book of Acts, and the apostles were the church. So the Holy Spirit moved on the church, and the church moved in the community. So when we talk about this message of Jesus Christ, this is the message of hope to the hopeless. The person that may be diagnosed that we may come into contact with, somebody that we may come into contact with that has somebody that has been contacted by it. Now, we don't shy away from the message of Jesus Christ and salvation and healing and deliverance. We don't shy away from that. Whatever Jesus Christ blesses us to proclaim, we stand for that because they need that then more than ever. How many of you have ever been down in the dumps emotionally? <laughs> Jesus Christ, that message, yeah. when you're hopeless and there's a way out and that name is in Jesus, that he can make a way out of no way, Amen. but not that he can, he will, but he has to challenge us with our mortality.
He has to challenge us with our frailty. He has to allow certain things and certain measures to take place so people can really see how important the Christ is more than the coronavirus. Not to see how important the Christ is, but also how important that which he established, the church. So we do have a work to do. We, there is something that the church can do. The first thing is, we can preach the message. I ain't a preacher. Yes, you is. <laughs> yes, you are. But you go around talking like Uncle Jack. Talk better than I talk. Now, why is Christ so important in this context? Because this plague is a result of sin, the message of Jesus Christ is the antidote. This, yes, ma'am, I will. I love that you're such a good student. Because this plague, the coronavirus, is a result of sin, our sin bearer and our sin conqueror, Jesus Christ, that message is the antidote. As long as people are comfortable, they won't change. They won't. Because where there's comfort, there's no change. But when Jesus Christ allows something to come in and shake up your world, and the stars start realigning, <laughs> people begin to look at themselves and start seeing themselves in the, in the light of truth. Because then the only thing when Jesus Christ has shaken up the foundation of, uh, of, of uneven foundation, then he's able to come in and settle it. That's why the church is so important. So not only are you bringing a message of hope, but you're also bringing a message of truth. Oftentimes called the gospel, the I, I call it the ion, 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 ion. Uh, to those who don't want to hear the gospel, to those who don't want to hear about Jesus Christ, to those who want to hear about uh, righteousness and holiness, to those who want to hear about the integrity uh, of, 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 of a holy standard, it's inconvenient, it's offensive, but it's necessary. Sometimes you have to inconvenience people with this message. Sometimes you will offend people with this message. But it's necessary that they hear this message. Amen. Now, one of the most important things about everything we're going about, we've been praying at our church, we've been praying for revival. But I don't know if y'all know this, sometimes you hear me pray, I say, God, send repentance. Mm -hmm. Because there cannot be revival until it's repentance. Mm -hmm. So what does God do? He sends something to shake. Because there can't be true repentance until I've seen myself in the true light of who I am. So he sends something. He allows something to come. Shake you up. Lord, forgive me. Save me. Deliver me. Whatever it is that it takes. That I may be who you called and created me to be. Speak in this place, God. That's why the church is so important, y'all. Jesus Christ is the only power over this plague. Y'all hear me? When we talk to people about Jesus Christ, especially in lieu of all that's going on, because it could potentially be drawn to a famine, Jesus Christ is the only power. Notice what I'm saying. He's the only power. And he will not allow a doctor, a nurse, of any, or any person who practices medicine to get the answer until certain persons have got the truth Amen. that they need him. Amen. That's why it's important for us to continue as the church, to preach the message, to pray, to do what we can do. We have a work. Everybody's not going to do the same thing. That's beautiful. I'm grateful that my ears and my hands do different things. Amen. They do it for the same body. Amen. Amen. Questions, comments, observations? Let's go to Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 22 through 25. We get to say amen. Amen. <laughs> Well, uh, thank you. Amen. Because there's some more things that we can do as a church. There's some more things we can do as a church. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 22 to 25. Amen. Um, there we go. Got him. Bam, right there. Okay. So I want y'all to be encouraged, especially as a church. <laughs> Verse 22 reads, Let us draw near with the, with the true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. Amen. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the matter of some, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approach. Amen. Amen. Another thing we can do, y'all, as the church, 
Jesus tells us, preach this message. Be a witness of the message. But we can also, in this process, draw closer to God. Now, why is that important, especially in the context of this? We're going to have to draw closer to God if we're going to reach God's people. Amen. You may deal with the, the most heart-wrenching and gut-punching predicament. And each and everything that the devil does is designed to push us away from God. Yes. But as we see the day approaching, notice that, the day approaching, Jesus talking about the last day, judgment day, as we see that day approaching, and Jesus was talking about in Matthew 24, 4 through 8, about the last day. This is the beginning of sorrows. So as we are seeing these things fulfilled and manifest themselves right before our eyes, we are seeing the day approach. This is not the time to draw away from God, church. Amen. This is the time to draw closer to God. Okay? So we say, Lord, preacher, you talking that talk to God, you know scripture behind your words. <laughs> Verse 1 2. Let us draw near with the true heart and full assurance of faith. Let us draw near. That's drawing closer to God. Knowing that your assurance of faith is secured in Him. Right. I draw closer to Him because He got my faith. Mm -hmm. I draw nigh to Him because He got my faith. The scripture declares, draw nigh to God, He will draw nigh to thee. Mm -hmm. But notice what He tells us, y'all. For us to draw near. That's our responsibility. That's something else we can do with the church. So not only do we preach the word, not only do we be witnesses of the word, but we also in the process of doing as best as we can to get closer to God. You know, it's amazing that now some people, uh, my, my queen in particular, doesn't have to go to class. My wife doesn't have to go to school. You know, she doesn't have to go quote unquote teaching. But that's not the time to say, Ooh, God, I thank you. I'm about to start watching TV. <laughs> I'm going to catch up on all these shows I didn't miss. Oh, done. I didn't, I didn't did. I'm going to catch up on all these shows. Know, frozen not, 20 times you're not, not home for watching TV. But this, that's not why God is allowing you to stay home. There's some praying that needs to be done. There's some seeking me that needs to be done. There's some, I got something to talk to you about. There's somebody that I'm gonna send you into contact with that if you ain't if you ain't spent time with me, you're gonna miss them. Yeah. Right. Let us draw near okay. with a true heart. That true heart means that we're being we have integrity in our pursuit of God. We don't have any biases, any aliases, we don't have any uh stigmas, any ulterior motives. We right. just want to draw closer to God in the full assurance of faith. Having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our blood, our bodies washed with pure water. The second thing we can do is let us hold fast our confession of hope without wavering. That means we must get stronger in our faith. We must get Amen. stronger. Yes, ma'am. The true heart that you have the integrity, that your heart, you don't have any ulterior motives, no biases. You're coming to him just for him. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just for him. Third thing we can do as the church, this is a, this should be encouraging to you, that we must get stronger in our faith. Not just having a strong faith, but a strong girl faith. Why? Because the things that we're going to be dealing with in the season is designed to make us weak. Right. To pull, remember, it's designed to pull us away from God. So right. if it pulls you away from God, then your faith is being challenged. Yes. We should be shackled to God. Mm -hmm. And say God puts the most shackles on. But we can't get strong in the faith if we're not desiring to get closer to him. Mm -hmm. In other words, Lord, increase my appetite for you. Yes. Increase my hunger for you. Increase my, my desire for you. Increase my zeal for you. I want to be stronger in you. Because God forbid one of us happen to be diagnosed with the coronavirus. We definitely don't want to be uh, drifting off the shore. Right? So it's nothing that we can do as the church. So God does not handicap the world unless the church is not being the church. Are y'all listening? Yes, sir. One of the reasons why the world is in the stage that it's in 
Because the church is not being the church. Amen. We can't be so focused on numbers, right, right. likes, That's good. That's good. hits, programs. Yeah. If it ain't about bringing people to the kingdom, it's the wrong message. Yeah. If it ain't about bringing somebody from darkness into light, it's the wrong message. Yeah. God says that he came that you may have life and that more abundantly. Yeah. He's not anti you making it. But he is anti you making it without him being at the precipice of your making. Yeah. Does this make sense? Yes, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So I, I want this to be encouragement, though. I want this, you know, I want y'all to be encouraged by this. So, uh, what am I, Lord? Help me. <laughs> let us hold fast. The conf let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, getting stronger. Let us hold fast, drawing closer, but you're also holding on. Y'all, the image is a, a little child being afraid of a dog getting on their parent. <laughs> Not only do they get on the parent, they hold on tight to the parent mm -hmm. to the degree that the parent be like, get off me. <laughs> I got you. Right. Well, the good news about God, he'll tell you to get off him. Amen. Right. Thank you, Father. Without wavering, without wavering, things that try to shake you up to get you to waver. When your faith is challenged, how come God ain't healed? How come God ain't deliver him? You prayed in tongues. How come God didn't move? <coughs> Holding on to our hope without wavering. Because when it's all said and done, y'all, the Christ makes the final decision. But the church has to be a byproduct of his will. We have to do the message. Mm -hmm. All right. Lord, I thank you. Oh, there's nothing we can do at the church. The word of God says later on, verse 23, for he who promised is faithful. Amen. Faithful to what? To what he said. Right. Yeah. Faithful to what he said. See, the bad news about the coronavirus, there are going to be some people going to die and get the message of Jesus Christ, the opportunity to repent and come unto Jesus Christ, but they won't. That's the bad news. But the good news is, some who are going to give their life to Christ. And y'all going to be a reason. Y'all point to me. I'm going to be a reason too. <laughs> That's it. We all going to be. We in this together. <laughs> so we want to be guilty of first preaching the message. No matter what, in spite of Jesus Christ, through the word of God, tells the Apostle Paul by the Holy Spirit, tell us to be ready in season and out. I ain't a preacher, just you are. You're a disciple. You're a kingdom disciple. Everything you do represents Jesus. Tell somebody about it. Especially in lieu of this disease, this plague that Jesus prophesied over 2020 years ago that was going to come to fruition. Tell people about him. Give them that hope that Jesus can heal. Jesus can deliver. He can bring you out. Even if you catch it, he can get it out of you. Amen. He's God. He don't need no help. He just allows man to help carry out his matters. All right. Okay. Verse 24. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. Fourth thing we must do as a church. We must serve. We must serve to stir up love and good works. What time is it, y'all? 6.30. 7.36. I was like, 6? Jesus, we went backwards. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean. So we really are in the time warp. Okay, glory to God. Say, so let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. We now serve. Now, remember I said earlier that everybody can't serve the same way. Right. There, there may be some people who have it, and we can't serve in the way we would serve somebody else. Maybe somebody who came into contact with somebody who had it. But we do have the luxury and the privilege of serving. The church must serve. Amen. Some of our service may come in the form of just praying because that's all we can do. Some of our service may come in the form of actually getting canned goods and laying them at somebody's door. If they get to a stage, listen, y'all, there's a lot of stuff that's going on. If they do a shutdown, well, you know, we as I, as Victoria's Believers Church of God Christ, we have to talk to the police station and see, okay, can you send this somewhere? What can we do to serve? It's not a question of if we can. The question is, what can we do? But what's the ultimate purpose of this type of serving, especially if somebody is dealing with this coronavirus in such a tangible way to stir up love and good works. Right. 
It's there. Now we got to stir it up. Yeah, yeah, Activate yeah, 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 yeah. it. Your service activates something inside the other person. Amen. Stirs up love. Because, believe it or not, when you are isolated, you become the devil's puppet. Come on now. Right. And then he leaves you with you. Yes, he does. Now, trust me, I like being by myself. I'm alone by, heart, by nature. The way God created me, I'm really alone. Y'all see me talking in front of y'all? I'm always to tell you, I get by myself, I love being alone. But I can't be by myself too long. <laughs> because then I have to start dealing with me. When I start dealing with me, I talk, I talk bad to me. I, I put me down. I put me so, so low, you got to dig me up. <laughs> Kill myself. Seriously. Thanks. I feel so bad after each Tuesday night sometimes. Y'all, y'all better pray for that woman. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Baby, you did a good job. Nah. <laughs> Baby, I, I think they were blessed. It's just the most trifling way home. I didn't, the only thing I didn't do was cry. <laughs> the devil will lead you with you. And you will beat you up. You become the devil's fuck. So when you start loving on people, especially those who are affected by this, those who are, even if they're not directly affected, if you're isolated, you'll have the opportunity of engaging with people that you love. And you begin to serve on those people. They begin to bubble up in love. And you're talking to them. They begin to start drawing to Jesus Christ. Go ahead, go ahead. I, a, I work at a nursing home. I mean, it's people like me. My baby, I'm talking about the same. We ain't fighting against your baby. <laughs> <laughs> she, every night, well, she used to cry. Every night. And then she used to cry the whole time. I go in there with her every night and I say her prayer. And it's funny because now she's got the heaven, but she doesn't miss it. Mm-hmm. She starts crying. I walk in. I can hear her outside the door. So that's like me. And I go check on for a donkey. <laughs> <laughs> but you can hear outside the door. Mm-hmm. But it's amazing what you can do, how you can bring people's spirits up, and what you can do to people. Amen. When you go down, Amen. It's, it's amazing. Amen. The, the turnaround is yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. So, so that love, the love of God, mm-hmm. that God bless you to give while you mm-hmm. serve, mm-hmm. stirs up love, and then it becomes contagious and infectious. Yes. So, knows how the church is killing the coronavirus. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Look at how the church begins to kill the coronavirus. Look at what the church begins to do to the coronavirus through the power of Christ. Speak, Holy Ghost. Exhale. I feel the power right now. So, this is the beautiful thing because you begin to stir up love, good works, and contagious, infectious spreads. In other words, as God blessed me to preach it in our church all those years ago, you begin to infect the virus. The power of Jesus Christ begins to infect the virus, stirring up love and good works. So now, all of a sudden, that person who was down in the dump, that person who was distraught and depressed, the person who was isolated and alone, that person who was bound in the baggage, and all of a sudden, they begin to experience the love of God, and now they stir up to do something for God. Good works. A good work is any work that's done in God's name. Amen. Okay? <laughs> Plenty of people do good things, but God don't consider those good works. Mm-hmm. Only that which you do for God is considered to God a good work. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Amen. That's because how we know this, all our righteousness is filthy rags. If they were good in and of themselves, Jesus Christ wouldn't have died on the cross. So because Christ is the conqueror of the sin and this Coronavirus is the byproduct or result of the sin. We give people the message of Jesus Christ where we preach the message, draw closer to him, continuously giving them service unto God, stirring them up. The antidote. The antidote. This is our responsibility, y'all. Okay, so good works. A good work is any good work that you do for God. And you do it in God's name. In other words, I'm not doing this for the sake of me looking good. I'm doing this for the sake of God looking good. We gotta make sure we get, we get careful because just because you get accolades don't mean that Amen. God's getting glory. Amen. 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 All right. Come on. Last thing. Verse twenty-five. Not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together, as in the manner of some, but exhorting one another. <clears throat> Excuse me. Exhorting one another, and so much more as you see the day approaching. Last one.
We, my wife helped me with this, sis. My wife helped me with this, make sure it works. We mustn't. <laughs> we must not. Is that an apostrophe NT or an N apostrophe? N apostrophe T. I thought so, but I don't want to you know. We mustn't job, abandon <laughs> the church. Yeah. That's right. Amen, amen. I'll put also. Also exhort. Mm -hmm. Exhort us to encourage. We, in times like this, must not abandon the church. Amen. Now is not the time to tuck our tails and flee. Come on now. Now is not the time for the head to disassociate itself from the body. Amen. Now is not the time for the right hand to disassociate itself from its elbow. It says, forgetting not. Forgetting not. In other words, we remember. It becomes a remember, remember, dash it, remember, reconnecting. Mm -hmm. We regularly reconnect with the body. We're bringing the members back together. Notice what the coronavirus is doing. Separating us. Mm -hmm. Isolating us. Mm -hmm. The word of God already told us to not forsake. Yes, ma'am. So that means um, that what, like Sunday, we're still here, mm -hmm. whereas uh, these other churches that's closing their mm -hmm. doors and, on Sunday. And that's and that's actually what I'm just about to go, because there are certain rules and laws and bylaws. Well, if you have a a, a church over 500, you can't have them all in the same place. Mm -hmm. well, so before that, yes, ma'am, they were starting to do it. And, so, and some were, and and this is what they we have to do. We don't want to be the type of people church that are casting aspersions on other people's faith mm -hmm. because I have the faith to come and somebody else will have the faith to come. Mm -hmm. We don't want to be talking, oh, they ain't got no faith. No, we're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. We're going to allow the head of the other shepherd of those churches to be led by God. Mm -hmm. But we, as a, as a body, as a community, we need to know that the connection with the body of Christ is vital. Mm -hmm. This, this is going to sound funny and bad. I don't mean it to. But people with prosthetic don't ain't excited to take their prosthetic off. They would much rather have their regular leg or arm. Y'all right. mm -hmm. do know that, right? I, mm -hmm. I work with I work with a person who has a prosthetic leg. Mm -hmm. and they tell me all the time, it be itching, they get tired of it. <laughs> they tell me, enjoy your body. Okay. Now and uncle, um, listen, I be listening to them like, talk to me. <laughs> I take it all in. Why? It's because regular association with the body. Continues to keep us drawn closer, getting our faith stronger, stirring up love and the good works in us. Mm -hmm. So if this is how God is blessing the church to counteract and to kill the coronavirus, it's important and essential that we as a local body continue to remain connected. Now, you may not come this coming up Sunday, but you're praying with us. Mm -hmm. Some people are not here today for various reasons. Everybody that's not here is not here because they're scared of the coronavirus. Right. I had some calls saying, look, I got to work. Right. You do what you got to do. We're not going to be mm, scary. No. <laughs> be led by God. We love you. We're in this together. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, Christ wants the church to be the counter to the coronavirus, not the other way around. And as we continue to show love, stirring up good works, stirring up love, serving people, You'd be surprised to see exactly how much glory God can get. Because ultimately, when people start coming to Christ, can you imagine one person gets saved inside of a hospital where they're isolated? Mm. But then all of a sudden, they, you know, they become the, the disciple of that chapel, of that, of that section. Mm -hmm. They're talking to people about Jesus. There was a guy on CNN. He was giving this testimony about uh, Jesus Christ and no weapon formed against being able to prophesy. And how God's blessing was turning another way. He was about to pray. They, they, you know, they were nervous. They ain't saying they was nervous. Because them all can't be talking about Jesus too much. But uh, uh, that's what Jesus said. And that's what we're going to do. Also, he said, but exhorting one another, and so much so as we see the day approaching. So much the more as you see the day approaching. We're going to encourage each other. So what we see gives us encouragement to continue to. Stir up each other, one another with love. 
gives us encouragement to know, look, Jesus' word is true. Gives us encouragement to know now, this is why we gotta get urgent. We have to be urgent with this message. Because souls gonna go to hell. But we don't want them to go to hell because we didn't give them the opportunity mm -hmm. to accept the Christ as Lord and Savior. We didn't give them that message of hope. We didn't come to them in scariness. We came to them with power and authority. Right. Mm -hmm. And Jesus, that message, when that darkness, get a chance to experience that light, they, they, they twinkling, they flickering, but they get this opportunity of knowing, listen, because he came and he died for sin, and this coronavirus is the byproduct or a result of that sin, but if I give my life to him because he conquered it already, I have eternal life and peace with him. Remember, it doesn't happen to people who think they got it all together. Right. But when he gets you shaking, he <laughs> checks you and you have to start looking at your what? <laughs> yeah, frailty your frailty and your mortality. You start looking at your own humanity. You start looking at your own livelihood. You start looking at my, oh, my eternal destiny. You'd be surprised how much power, how much anointing, how much word you actually know when God bless you to start being that light in the dark place. Mm -hmm. yeah. 748. Questions, comments, observations. Glory to God. No. I, I'm just going to say that I'm glad I came tonight. Um, God bless. I'm glad you came too. <laughs> felt like I needed to be here. Like Thank I you. made it home like like right at 7. <laughs> and then had, to, had some groceries to unpack and stuff. And I was like, I, the thought came across my mind, oh, you can just stay at home. But then something great on the inside yeah. said, you know, like you need to get there. Right. <laughs> and just hearing the word tonight just encourages me to stay focused on the right thing on Amen. what's what matters the Amen. most you know Amen. god bless you and then you, um even where things where i've been shifting some mm. i see myself coming back into alignment thank you Lord. Mm -hmm. with god's will yes. thank you, Jesus. and so i'm thankful to be here today and then like what you were saying earlier about you know god doesn't want you just be at home you know catching up on tv right, right, shows right, right, and stuff like right. that but i had for a while been missing my my time with my God. Right. And I went in my room and closed my door today. God bless you. And just paced the floor back and forth talking to Amen. God. Thank you, Lord. Amen. You Thank know, you, just Lord. asking him, Amen. get me out of this dry season. Amen. So I got you, to get back to you. Because right. once you've been there before, you know what it's like. It's yes. like, I got to get back to that yes. place. So I'm happy that I'm here. Just your words bless. Keep doing what you're doing. Lord, God, just God bless you, just keep telling the truth, yes, okay? Yes, and sometimes it cuts, but that's what God's word does. Thank but it's Lord. good for us. Amen. It's Amen. Good God for bless us. you. God Thank bless you. you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Uh, any other questions, comments, observations? I just do this quick recap. You got anything? No. Not one. He, he's asking because he normally asks the kids come to the front. Yeah. So <laughs> this is what the church must do. This, this is what the church must do. This is what the church can do. Number one, as Jesus said. Preach the message of Jesus Christ, the message of the kingdom. That's what we must do in times like this. Number two, draw closer to God. Number three, we must get stronger in our faith. Holding on, holding fast to our hope without wavering. Number four, we must serve to stir up love and good works. How do we serve? It's, remember, everyone can't serve the same way. As I said earlier, some of us will be able to serve with actually doing something for the other person, while some of us may only be able to serve in the form of praying, mm -hmm. fasting. But whatever it is that we can do, serve. Because when we do that, then we stir up love and good works. Last but not least, we mustn't. Thank you, baby. We mustn't. Because okay. I was putting it, I was frightened, and it was telling me it was wrong. I like mustn't is a word. My wife's smarter than you. So, <laughs> baby, we mustn't abandon the church. Yes. We mustn't abandon the church. We mustn't abandon the body of Christ. If God gonna show off, He gonna use the church to do it. Amen. While in the process of doing that, we're exhorting one another. Amen. Because as we continue to stir up the gifts, uh, uh, stir up love and good works of other people, we're getting drained. We're dealing with it. We're going to be dealing with the depression of people. Oh, yes. Dealing with the cries and the heartaches and the hurts of people. As I said, they, isolation puts you in a stage where you got to deal with you when you become Satan's puppet. So when we come to the body of Christ, whether we come in just 10 of us at a time, or whether we come in segments, however, we get an opportunity to exhort, hey, man, God, see your work, man. Keep it up. Don't come off the wall. That's it. Keep holding strong. Keep fighting the good fight of faith. Mm -hmm. Your labor of the Lord is not in vain. 
God got you. God see what you're doing. God is not unjust to forget your labor of love. That, when you begin to do that, you get that fuel, and you're ready to go back to war. I pray y'all been blessed.